and there go this beautiful lady mm -hmm. growing up. <laughs> and so I decided to try to talk to her at that time, and I didn't know that she, she was not in college yet, so I was asking mm -hmm. for her screen name. In those days, uh, you have to be in college to be on Facebook. And oh she, yes, yes, yes. yes and she wasn't in, in college, so she couldn't. She did. She was trying to give me a hard time. Mm. Um, but everybody that was there, that there was a couple of friends around her, and I was communicating with her. But they can tell that something was happening, mm. so they kind of left us alone. They left me. <laughs> and then I spoke to her, and then she didn't give me any information. But I went. I went back to school, and then one day I looked on Facebook, and I saw her on Facebook. So nice. I reached out to her, and then we start. You know, we start communicating through instant messages mm. and stuff like that. And from there, you know, we started developing the relationship. I would call her sometimes, and then we would talk. I would call her to pray for me because I used to play basketball in school, oh, wow. in college. So when right. we go, when we have games, I would speak to her. Listen, I would need you to pray for us, for us to win, and she would pray, and then <laughs> we, would, we would win. And uh, I kind of liked her spirituality in those days. And it was, she was all the way in Buffalo, which is about six hours from where I was living. So. Mm. It was never a physical relationship, it was all more communicating online. And then, um, as time was going on, I was showing more interest in her, but she was still, you know, trying to figure her life out. And, you know, I got to a point, I graduated, I wanted to settle, because I was in ministry, I, I felt like, you know, this is a time to really get married, and most young guys think that way, like get married so you can do ministry. ministry yeah. And then, that's where the enemy also presented me, Mm. A decoy with right? another choice. With another choice. Because <laughs> you were playing hard to get. Like, what do you want him to do? <laughs> you know, this is the two minutes version. But I'm going to go in detail. I know. I'm sure probably. I, I don't know whenever you're going to be here, but even if you have to come to the mountain, we'll yes. come. Well, we'll do like a proper relationship talk. And one day I called one of the sisters that I was with uh, from the old church, and the first thing that came out of my mouth, oh, is that your church in that kindergarten room? Mm. So like, and I can, sense, always use I can sense the spirit behind mm -hmm. what she said. And so from that day, I have not forgotten that statement. And then literally we, we were counting Sundays because at that moment we were not, we, not, we are not from Stanford. The Lord took us from New York to Connecticut. Mm. We don't know anybody there. Mm -hmm. And now you start a church there, who is coming? Mm -hmm. So every Sunday that we were able to meet, we counted like, Lord, thank you. Oh. Like we are still alive. Like one day at a time, one Sunday at a time, one Sunday at a time. And we were having service late. And uh, people would go to their different churches and come and in. Come. And then one day I said to him, I said, hey, we got to be a church. I'm tired of people giving us the extra. It's and like you're feeling used in a way. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. So I said, we have to move our services up. And so we decided to move it at 11, 11 a.m. So if you, if you can get people to come at 11 a.m., that means we have you, a church. You have, a, you have members. You have like, members. Yeah. And the moment we made that decision, some of them had to also make a decision, whether they would choose to go wherever they're going or come okay. here. Mm. And most of them make a decision to stay with us. Great. And I remember one lady who was helping us with our worship, mm. she made a decision not to be. And we kind of felt it. I said, fine, okay, you choose to go there. But then we kept those that were with us, you know, my wife, at that time, pregnant. Mm. But we'll be playing, we'll be setting up, carrying the instrument. We have to carry the instrument from the car to the location, clean up, because it was like a school. Yeah. And then set up, uh, take all the kindergarten chairs out, put a grown-up chairs, and then cover all those things, carry the instrument back in the car for the week, and then do all those things. I didn't know how to play piano, but hey, I had to play piano. So I mean, just <laughs> do whatever we have to do. To make it work, my wife would lead worship. Yeah. And it was just, we made it work. Mm -hmm. uh, one day at a time, one Sunday at a time. And little by little, you know, after a year, the Lord opened the door for us to get a location. We began to be very bold and aggressive. And even before we even had anyone helping in that area, again, it was all our money. We were sending back money. Even when Ukraine had the, the earthquake or whatever it was, yeah. we were there. You know, we're helping everywhere we go. And so when it comes to Ghana, we cannot neglect Ghana. Mm. If anything, it has to be primary considering God has this is where we come yeah. from, this is where our roots are from. And so what the vision is, is to potentially build a center that will allow people to 
I want a multi-level center where okay. when you come in, there's classrooms where you can learn a trade, a trade skill, Great. even media services, mm. whatever it is. Our primary goal is health, technology and education oh, and we're training people in those areas and so a uh, community center what we found is every time we would come and donate food it stopped there mm. and people only come during the holidays just to you know make a post yeah. out of it yeah and we realized that these young girls they they need more the young men they need more and then you have a disparity of ages when we went to one we had like a 35 year old man and there's 12 year old girls and I'm like why are you here mm. and he's like I don't have anything I don't I don't know any trade I was brought up in this system and he said the food is what we keep getting mm. but nobody's assisting us and so the ultimate goal is to build a huge center we want a huge piece of land and i want to make it like a dome wow. where when you walk in there's facilities there's you know you get health services for yourself you can get trained if you want to learn how to braid you can learn if you want to learn tech and media mm. you can do that if you want whatever you want to do lpn whatever you want to do home care whatever you want to wow. do so that once you leave that that orphanage that you come from, you, you're you leaving with a skill, a skill. as well too. Mm. Because it's not enough just to keep giving these people food. The food is highly important, but they need more than that. Mm.